Hello again. I've inserted this video after I've finished the series because I thought I've actually missed covering Ocaml unions, which are quite important in understanding how Ocaml works. Now, the material in this video is all copy and paste from this quite interesting book here Introduction to Objective Camel by Jason Hickey. Uh, it's still a draft copy, it was done in 2008, and I recommend everyone to download it. It's available online. You can download it and read through it. It's quite a useful book. Now, back to the slides. What are unions? You must come, you must have come across unions before in C, for example. Usually, unions sometimes called people call them disjoint unions or tagged unions or variant record variant records or algebraic data types. They are an important part important part of the OCaml type system. Now. <coughs> A, a disjoint union, or maybe a union for short, represents the union of several different types. The name says it all. The name union actually suggests that we have several different types put together in one container, if you like, where each part, each of the parts, is given a unique explicit name. So the syntax looks like this. We have type, we give it a name, equals, and then we have um, several vertical bars, with an identifier and its, and its type. So identifier 1 of type 1, identifier 2 of type 2, they are separated by vertical bars. The first vertical bar is optional. Now, the union type is defined by a set of cases separated by the vertical bar character, by this character here, as we saw here. The first vertical bar, bar is optional, as we mentioned. Each case I has an explicit uh, name identifier. I called a constructor name. So every case I has an identifier, and this identifier is called constructor. Constructor name. It has an optional value of uh, type type I. So the type here is optional. But e each one must have an identifier or um, <coughs> must have a constructor name. Now the constructor name must be capitalized, always starts with a capital letter, it always starts with a capital letter, and the definition of type I is optional, if omitted there is no explicit value associated with the constructor. Enough talking, let's take an example. If you look at this example, again this is taken from Jason Hickey's book, the one I showed you in the beginning at the beginning of, of this of this video. Now we are trying to uh, sort of define a number. So we can have a type number equals zero maybe or integer of int. Remember we said the constructor name must be capitalized. First letter, first letter must be capital of type int. If you remember the syntax from here. So identifier of type da 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 and then real capital R of type of float and then we close it with a semicolon. Uh, remember the first vertical bar is optional. I can copy and paste that into my top loop. Let me start my terminal and then go into my top loop, paste that and as you can see now it's happy. It's telling me a number can be a zero or an integer of int or real of float. So basically what, what this means is whenever we have a, whenever we have a variable of type number that means that variable can be one of, uh, of, of one of these three types basically it can be a zero or integer of int or real of float now how can we actually do that in practice going back to Jason Hickey's book um, so for example if we want to declare a zero what we can say is for example let z equals zero notice that zero here we didn't give it any sort of type so we just can so it's telling me here that z is a number and the corresponding value is actually the zero if I want some integer I can say let i for example equals integer of i and now I'm sorry um, uh, no w w w i is still undefined by the way so I can say what I can say is integer maybe of six and that works so it knows that i is actually a number of value integer 6 and i can say for example let d equals maybe real um, of value maybe for example 3.4 
and as you can see it's it knows now that d is a number of type is it is of type number value real real 3.4 um, if you remember the pattern matching we did before, we can do that in our case here. So, for example, what we can do is we can have a, a small function called float of number that converts any variable of type number to its corresponding floating point value. <coughs> so, if we have a zero, which is, for example, our z here, then we can return. If, as you, if you remember pattern matching, match n with, so the function receives a variable of t called n, and then we can say match n with, if it's a 0, then we return 0, 0. If it's of type integer i, then we have this function from uh, the pervasives module, float of int, which converts an integer to um, a float. We, can, we also have the opposite, which is int of float converts an int to a float and then if it's a real number which is a floating number then we just return the value without having to convert it so if I copy and paste that um, and now if I pass it for example let's say so notice automatically it infers that it receives a number and returns a float so if I pass it the z it returns yeah floating number not number so if I pass it the z, returns 0. If I pass it, for example, uh, the i, it should return 6.0. If I pass it the uh, d, it just returns the d as is. You can pass it, for example, integer 66. And as you can see, it returns that. By the way, speaking about float of int, we can have the opposite int of float and we pass it a floating number 4.5 and returns only the integer part uh, again I've inserted this video after I finished the whole series because unions are very a very important part of the OCaml type system and hopefully we'll be using it in the future so we can learn more and more about OCaml and about unions in general thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next tutorial series